This is one of Honkai Star Rail's best DPS, and today I'm going to show you how to build them. So first off, if you didn't know, this lady has an insanely big cock. Don't believe me? Watch this. <laughs> If that hasn't convinced you, Su Sheng is one of three currently available DPS on the Jingyuan banner that I'm sure everyone is pulling on, and she is one of the only ways to currently deal physical damage in Honkai Star Rail. But enough stalling, let's get into it. First off, if you're curious about how Su Sheng works, she is a DPS at her core. That of course means supporting or buffing her in any way, shape, or form while enabling her to do damage as a hunt character. Unlike Jingyuan, who has a fairly complex playstyle and game plan, Su Sheng pretty much just gets pushed up up, uses cock attack and spams her skill for more damage. That's it. That's pretty much the whole idea. Just as a reminder, her ultimate does give her an extra turn, so time buffs with her ultimate into skill cast for maximum damage. As a final tip, you do guarantee the sword stance extra damage on Su Shang's skill should you hit a weakness broken character, so keep that in mind when you're deciding who to use your skill on. But again, pretty straightforward, pretty flexible, she's a great DPS. Moving along, we have her light cone options. Her own sword play is a great choice when it comes to 4 stars. Su Shang will typically hit the same target several times anyway, given her skill's desired game plan of hitting weakness broken enemies. With this in mind, it's a solid option should you lack the next light cone I'm about about to mention. Cruising in the Stellar Sea or her to store Light Cone is another really strong option for hunt characters given the free crit rate and the extra stats given when the enemy is less than 50% or when the user defeats an enemy. Additionally, this option allows you to hit multiple targets as opposed to hard focusing one. This in combination with the base unconditional free crit rate makes it highly desirable for those looking to hit certain crit ratios or thresholds. Swordplay also doesn't necessarily come easily since it's a summon only Light Cone. But again, both are pretty decent should you have the ability to use either. However, all of these light cones pale in comparison to the true best in slot option, which is in the night. Sila's light cone gives up to 30 free crit chance, increases the damage of the user's skill, plus ultimate damage, and also scales with speed. All of these provided benefits pretty soundly place the light cone as her best choice should you have picked it up. As a side note, the base crit rate for in the night is also higher than cruising in the stellar seas, even when having it max superimposed. That, of course, is definitely something to keep in mind when debating who gets what light cone. Now it's time for everyone's favorite section, do you have to spend the next week exhausting energy on materials to upgrade a character's traces? And unfortunately, the answer is yes for Su Shang. To be completely honest, the trace system in this game definitely leaves much to be desired, especially after unlocking later equilibrium levels. While early levels in a character's skill or stats do not cost much, later investment after level 4 or 6, depending on what you're upgrading in the trace tree do start to add up. After these levels, certain upgrades start to cost more and higher tier materials. And bad news part 2, Su Chang is not a character who can simply coast along and avoid needing heavy investment. Given her role as a team's primary or at least supporting damage dealer, she needs every damage increase possible and certainly desires any attack percent traces available. In terms of priority, I would like to preface that pretty much everything needs to be maxed but I could see an argument for leaving your basic attack and defensive stat bonuses for later. With this out of the way, I would definitely say that her ultimate and skill are both equally valuable with the attack percent increases coming afterward. For relics, I would also like to make a disclaimer about current, past, and future builds. To begin, it should be clear that Hoyoverse designed certain sets to be used with certain elements or DPS. In Su Shang's case, the champion of Streetwise Boxing Set is designed perfectly for her. However, as we continue to theorycraft and discover more options for builds, it should be noted that certain combinations like two-piece musketeer with two pieces of a specific element set is usually equally as effective. What that means for relic sets is that sometimes the four piece of a set may not be that good relative to the calculated damage of another relic build. And that isn't even taken into consideration whether or not it would be worth it to try and farm out four pieces of an entirely new set. Where this actually becomes interesting is when you take into consideration the four piece set effect of the quantum set, Genius of Brilliant Stars. While Su Shang will definitely see great value with four pieces of the boxing set, the quantum four piece set effect reading ignore 10% defense and an additional 10% if the target has quantum weakness may actually be better. Long story short, endlessly farming for a perfect four set of quantum gear may not be in vain. But enough of that, you're probably either running four pieces of the physical, two musketeer, two physical, or just using four musketeer to be efficient. When it comes to her ornament or planar set, using the inert Salsoto or space ceiling station is ideal. Although space ceiling station does do more than the other in terms of DPS, what is actually more relevant for which set you should be farming is how good the other set is for your units. For instance, if trying to gear supportive characters like Tingyun or Branya, 
there is definitely good reason to be farming the space ceiling station for Fleet of the Ageless. When it comes to main stats though, Su Sheng is similar to most other DPS. Her chest can swap between crit rate or crit damage depending on how your relics rolled. Her boot is probably best with speed, but you can definitely see value in attack percent if you have ways to increase her overall speed or if you have Bronya and Tingyun. And her link rope should probably just be attack percent followed by the planar sphere being physical damage. Nothing new here, same as always. When talking about ideal substats, you should definitely look to maintain a traditionally higher crit rate value while maintaining the tried and true one crit rate for every two crit damage. And as I mentioned before, Su Sheng is a typical DPS who just wants to maximize damage per turn. With that being the case, after crit is settled, attack percent is king followed by speed. I do want to mention that if you are looking to build Su Sheng for memory chaos, the value and speed may dwindle a little bit since the current buff in memory chaos gives a turn to hunt characters. But in general, speed is of course still very valuable. On a final note, I do want to re-emphasize that Su Sheng can definitely make do with less in the relic department, and that you may seriously find value in giving up farming for a perfect set of gear, as opposed to having a flexible musketeer two or four piece set. When it comes to Su Sheng's Eidolons, she actually gains a considerable amount as a four star. For starters, her Eidolon is huge value considering you want to be hitting weakness broken enemies, and you essentially never consume skill points to do so after obtaining this Eidolon. So, Su Sheng actually saves a decent amount of skill points in the grand scheme of things immediately after you get two copies of her. Her second Eidolon is decent in terms of survivability, assuming you're able to maintain it, but honestly, I'm not sure if this is enough to prevent you from dying against some of the later Memory Chaos floors. And if you're trying to clear through content quickly, this really has no effect on you either. But if you do end up running a higher health or tankier Su Sheng, Maybe this adds value to your build. As always, the third and fifth Eidolons for characters are always nice when it comes to overall increases in damage, but I think Su Sheng's fourth and sixth Eidolons are pretty decent as well. The fourth Eidolon increases her break effect by 40%, which is actually quite nice when you consider what the physical weakness break effect is. For those looking to push above and beyond a memory chaos, the bleed inflicted upon applying weakness break to an enemy actually does percentage HP damage, which can then help bypass the difference in HP when fighting overleveled enemies. Just as a heads up though, focusing on break effect within relic subsets or main sets is usually not worth it. Finally, Su Sheng's sixth Eidolon affects her talent, which grants Su Sheng a speed increase whenever an enemy is weakness broken on the field. With this Eidolon, the speed buff is stackable, granting upwards of 30 to 42 percent speed for two turns, and she is granted one stack of the speed buff when entering battle. This is pretty straightforward, but in case you were unsure, speed good, especially when you're trying to maintain a certain amount of turns taken per cycle in the memory chaos floors. Now for team comp. Su Sheng is honestly pretty flexible since she's just a slot in DPS when you're fighting enemies weak to physical, or when you just want to use her for the damage dealing slot. With that being the case, you can expect one of two general team compositions that then branch off depending on what your account has rolled. The first way I believe Su Sheng can be played is as a DPS to complement a well-rounded team having a tank, healer, and a flex pick between an AoE DPS, a buffer, or a debuffer. What that means is that your most free to play team will probably include Su Sheng, Natasha, the Fire Trailblazer, and Serval, Asta, Pela, or March. I know I mentioned earlier that I wasn't entirely sold on the premise of tank Su Sheng with her second Eidolon, but you may see some value in the damage reduction when you're able to consistently reapply shields to the team with the Fire Trailblazer. Between Asta and Pela, it's really more of a do you need more consistent speed and attack increase, or can you time your big ultimate skill into skill damage burst under a defense reduction debuff. So, if you are unsure if you can time everything well in a fight, you're probably better off with Asta. And finally, we have March and Serval, who have nothing to do with each other, but are both extremely valuable. Serval is great as a supportive damage dealer when you need to clear multiple enemies and also functions as a lightning element weakness breaker. The only downside to having a second DPS, however, is that affording a second decent set is usually difficult, but this will become less of a problem as time goes on and you continue to farm for relics. With March, you have the benefit of having a shielder, cleanser, debuffer, healer, and somewhat of a supportive DPS all in one, assuming you have her max Eidolons. She really doesn't have a downside to being picked in all honesty, and for good reason. The ultimate freeze is clutch, the cleanse and provoke plus shield speaks for itself, and the healing plus added damage is nothing to laugh at, especially if you do manage to get Eidolon 6. Though I won't go too far into detail about them here, some of these characters can definitely be replaced depending on what you pull for or what content you're challenging. For instance, pairing Su Sheng with Ting Yun in place of Asta or Pela may prove helpful if you have her. Additionally, if you're encountering a situation where you need a more immediate effect to your buffs, she may prove better than Asta and Pela. The second way to play Su Sheng is with an 
entirely glass cannon setup. So using Asta and Pela, you can sometimes get away using a team of supports plus Sushank to clear encounters quick. An Asta who can take her turn quickly and start generating her attack increase and the overall damage increases provided by Tingyun really sell the effectiveness of this composition. If health or sustain or living is your concern, you can definitely swap out one of the supports for Natasha, or if you're really scared, run March and Natasha. But if we jump fully to the realm of what an ideal team composition would look like, unrestricted by not owning characters, I believe Sushank also benefits from the tried and true Tingyun Branya plus one flex composition. The flex last pick can definitely change based on the floor, simulated universe boss, or whatever content you're encountering, but I've found the most success just slapping in Bailu or your choice of Trailblazer slash Japard depending on what enemy is present. In case you aren't familiar with the way the composition works or how the individual characters function, Branya provides an extra turn and damage buff to whomever she uses her skill on and also buffs the hell out of the entire team with the crit damage and attack buff. This is complemented and preceded by Tingyun, who ideally uses either her ultimate or just her skill on Sushank before she takes a turn. I have gotten a few questions and debates about the turn ordering of things when it comes to these two units, but in general, I think this is how most encounters should go. Before the fight begins, you use Branya, Bailu, and Tingyun's techniques followed by Sushank's at the very end. The fight starts, Tingyun provides an attack buff with her skill, followed by Tingyun's ultimate cast onto Sushang, who then deals the first round of damage with her skill and ultimate. Branya then uses her skill to grant Sushang an extra turn and an additional round of damage. Now the main strength when it comes to this ordering of Tingyun and Branya is that you can generally use something like Branya's Light Cone or Past and Future to produce two turns of generally high damage. However, if all of this is just too much math and thinking, just run Dance 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 on Tingyun and speed tune Branya Branya however you like, so long as she's slower than Tingyun. Then just have Tingyun go, Branya can give the extra turn, DPS go, clean and simple. So as you can see, Su Sheng is pretty solid as a damage dealer so long as you're aware of why and when you're bringing her. I definitely think that her damage is comparable to some of the better damage dealers in Honkai Star Rail. Her being physical and having an HP% percent scaling bleed is also a major bonus for when you want to challenge harder enemies who aren't necessarily the same level as you. She does require decent investment to be good, so that's definitely something to take into consideration before building. But otherwise, I think she's a solid character who I plan on taking to level 80 when I have enough resources. But in any case, that's going to be it for this video though, guys. If you didn't know, I experiment, chat, theorycraft, and all that good stuff live on Twitch and in Discord. I also tweet out some of the pieces that I roll, so make sure to check that out as well. But anyway, if you enjoyed today's video, make sure to like, turn on the notification bell, subscribe, and let me know what you think about Su Shang in the comment section below. Thanks again, guys. I'll see you in the next one.